In the second example, the main challenge is instead that the objects are very closely spaced for some time before they separate again. As you may recall, the objects move from left to right and are well separated at the beginning and at the end of the sequence. The entire sequence lasts for 100 time steps. During the parts when the objects are well separated, it's possible to track them fairly accurately. But it's difficult to tell, for instance, if the object that started in the middle on the left continued straight or if it went up or down towards the end of the sequence. In this case, the PMBM tracker uses smoothing to improve the trajectory estimates compared to the Delta GLMB estimates. Smoothing may be nice to add, and it's cheap to perform compared to solving the data association problem, at least if you limit how far back you do smoothing. The Delta GLMB filter experiences track switches around k equals 75 and reports unrealistic trajectories after that. Interestingly, the PMBM tracker also experiences a track switch between time steps 86 and 87. If you look closely at the trajectory estimates, you can see that the middle trajectory on the right hand side is blue, whereas the bottom trajectory is orange. At time step 87, these two trajectories have swapped places with each other, meaning that we now think that the object that started in the middle remains in the middle, whereas the trajectory that started in the upper left corner crossed the other trajectories and continued down to the bottom right of the area. Importantly, the entire trajectory estimates have swapped places, and we still receive reasonable trajectory estimates at later times, which is not the case for the Delta GLMB algorithm. Apart from the fact that PMBM filters handled data association hypotheses in a nice manner, the PMBM tracker actually offers at least two separate improvements compared to the Delta GLMB algorithm. First, in the version illustrated above, we perform smoothing on the state estimates, which gives rise to smooth trajectory estimates. Second, even though both methods experience track switches, the PMBM tracker reports realistic trajectories also after the switch. It may be interesting to understand why the PMBM tracker does not report trajectory estimates with unreasonable switches. In the example below, we have illustrated a hypothesis tree for a single object which is enough to understand how this works. Suppose that at time three, the most likely hypothesis is the hypothesis marked in green. We then output a trajectory estimate corresponding to that hypothesis. Under the assumption that we only have one object, our estimate of the set of trajectories at time three would simply be that we have a trajectory that starts at time one, ends at time three, and takes the values x hat one given one, one, x hat 2 given 2, 2, and x hat 3 given 3, 4, during that interval. Given later measurements, it's possible that the most likely hypothesis is from a completely different branch in the tree. For instance, the green branch illustrated below. When that happens, we select our trajectory estimates from that branch in the tree. In this case, the sequence of state estimates in the trajectory would be x hat 1 given 1, 1, x hat 2 given 2, 1, x hat 3 given 3, 1, and x hat 4 given 4, 1. The key difference compared to the Delta GLMB algorithm is, of course, that all estimates are from the same branch, which enables us to avoid unreasonable switches. Please note that this happens even if we are not using smoothing to improve the state estimates at earlier times. Let us end with a few concluding remarks about sets of trajectories. When we start using sets of trajectories, we can build on the things that we've learned earlier in this course. For instance, we can leverage on the PMBM filters and the advantages that the PMBM conjugate priors give us, such as relatively few hypotheses and the ability to initiate tracks from measurements in a model-based manner. Sets of trajectories enable us to extract trajectory estimates in a simple manner and without increasing the computational complexity significantly. We have also illustrated that most of the challenges that we observed when using labeled tracking algorithms were resolved. One simple reason for this is that every trajectory estimate in our estimate x hat of the set of trajectories 
is selected from a single local hypothesis. That is, we don't combine estimates from different hypotheses into a single trajectory estimate. We also noticed that it's simple to combine sets of trajectories with smoothing and use measurements to improve state estimates at earlier time instances. Finally, it should be noted that sets of trajectories can be used for extended object tracking, mapping, track before detect, and also combined with, for instance, a multiple birth process.